All right. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much, very much, the organizers, uh, for putting together this wonderful program. Uh, I'm really uh, pleased to have have been invited to uh, participate in it. Uh, so, what I'd like to uh, do about today uh, is the work that we've been doing uh, on, on titanium four manganese bismuth. Uh, and I'd like to uh, present the evidence and uh, that this is potentially. Um, a, a, a system in which we can study one-dimensional um, spin physics uh, uh, as a, potentially a meta in a metallic environment. Uh, so, of course, before I begin, begin um, I'd like to uh, introduce you to my, my uh, junior colleagues uh, uh, who I did this work. Uh, this is a project that actually started uh, when I was um, uh, uh, here at Texas. Uh, and uh, as, uh, as you see, uh, perhaps to have more know uh, the gentleman in the middle, who is an graduate student here, I think with Eva Peng Peng and, uh, um, and uh, uh, with Amelia. And so that's a very, uh, very uh, pleasant. Uh, uh, we have uh, now a uh, different and uh, somewhat larger group of collaborators uh, who are on this. This is the, mostly the UBC team. Uh, there are few people who have an affiliation uh, elsewhere else. And the person that, uh, that I really want to uh, uh, bring to your attention is sitting straight back there. Uh, this is uh, somebody, and uh, and uh, uh, he has the misfortune of hearing me talk about his work, but uh, hope I'll hold the justice. So uh, I want to take advantage of the fact uh, that uh, uh, several of the speakers yesterday uh, really laid out uh, the uh, circumstances under which uh, strange metal behavior or other sorts of unconventional metallic behavior would be possible. Uh, and um, I, I think that we can organize uh, our thoughts, thoughts around this sort of uh, general uh, phase diagram that I'll walk through uh, in a minute. Uh, and so, so uh, in order to see strange metals or other sorts of quantum mechanical um, phases, uh, it's uh, often the case that you're, uh, that they are found down, uh, near the circumstances in which in some sort of ordered phase is suppressed in general, uh, let's say typically magnetic order. And there are really, um, in a metal way, there really are really ways that you can do that. Uh, in the first case, uh, you could look at uh, scenarios like one-dimensional systems or possibly uh, systems that form on uh, uh, frustrated lattices. Uh, uh, as you, uh, as you, uh, in those cases, uh, that you have strong quantum fluctuations, uh, and that if you go up the vertical axis, if those fluctuations become sufficiently strong, the system is no longer no longer to order, uh, uh, let's say, uh, magnetically, and you get a spin liquid kind of uh, scenario. Uh, so that would be good, uh, and, and uh, that's kind of where your your if you work on insulators. But on the other hand, uh, if it were to turn out uh, that you are in a metal, you have an additional degree of freedom freedom uh, that you can play with, and uh, that's represented on the horizontal axis. So here, the idea the idea to have a tuning parameter. It could be something like pressure or composition. Uh, and uh, what it does is that if you start with a situation where you have a localized lyophon has a spin or more that's associated with it, uh, that through hybridization, for instance, other sort of phenomena, uh, you could take that electron, which, which is sliced, meaning that it is not, not contained inside uh, the thermos, and you could change that situation so that, so that there were transition uh, between uh, a small and a large Fermi surface, where initially uh, the electron is is uh, is outside the surface, the surface and then ultimately becomes contained contained in the surface. And the details of that phase transition uh, at zero temperature um, uh, are, of course, of great of great interest uh, in this um, uh, um, workshop. And so, uh, I'm going to. Uh, 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 introduced to you today the system, uh, which is titanium for manganese bismuth two, which I'll argue is metallic in the sense that there's no charge gap uh, in the system, as far as we know. And I'd like to present the evidence uh, that uh, one dimensional magnetism uh, is uh, in here. So the first thing is to say, how do you know that you have a system that's, uh, that's really one dimensional, not somewhat one dimensional? Uh, and, and the smoking gun is uh, uh, in a one dimensional system, you can have a very specific uh, kind of excitation, the spin on and on, uh, which, uh, which would establish that fact. The, uh, uh, the spin on is uh, depicted on the run. Uh, uh, you can think of it as if you had an anti ferromagnetic chain uh, where the moments are up and down. And the moment in the middle, you go in and you flip it. 
And the consequence of that is that the system would like to get back to the uniform antiferromagnet. So it's going to generate generate dolls that will move apart part up, up to the point where 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 they are they are by the potential control. And so uh, this uh, spin on uh, excitation uh, leads to the spectrum that you see at the left. This is for a material copper state. Uh, and these are the uh, spin on energies as a function of uh, wave vector. On the left uh, is uh, the experimental data. On the right uh, is the theory using the parameter of exchange interaction uh, just uh, uh, to match them up. Uh, and so one can say that there's uh, an excellent understanding of how spin ons would work in an insulating. Uh, spin chain system. And so our question then is, then is could this possibly be different uh, if you had a system where, where you don't have localized spin or you have a metal or both? Uh, and so, so um, at, the, at the, the surface of it, uh, the answer is it shouldn't make a difference. Uh, that, that is, fundamental physics is actually incredibly strong. Uh, that that uh, even if you have a system where all you have is, say, conduction electric, uh, like, uh, like this organic standard CTFT CNQ, uh, uh, this there is no localized uh, moment uh, in uh, in this particular system. Oh, that this is a correlated metal in the sense that the Sommerfeld coefficient is substantial, uh, but the uh, angle resolved photoemission are unambiguous, and they find both the spin on and the line explanations, which is just what you would expect. Uh, it, it is. Uh, they are both excitation of the plunger liquid, uh, which is the ground state, which is the uh, which is which is um, uh, the phase that you would expect uh, on a one-dimensional system. So, the uh, purpose of it, it shouldn't make a difference whether you have you know a metal and an oscillator, localized or delocalized molecule. Uh, but uh, given that in three dimensions, it makes a lot of lot of uh, Whether you have a small or large Fermi surface, uh, we thought we could pursue similar issues system. In order to uh, to do that, uh, we did a search of the uh, uh, inorganic crystal structure database. Uh, initially, we were looking for chain-like these compounds. That was pretty, was pretty forward to do. But we also wanted to engineer the situation where the manganese moment itself uh, uh, potentially make a transition for being localized to be localized. And so um, in, uh, we, we, uh, we are guided by uh, sort of the, the um, solid state chemistry kind of view, which was, which was that if you look at this particular uh, series of compounds, rare earth manganese two, uh, where there's uh, direct manganese manganese bonding, what you can see is there's a transition from uh, large spacing, uh, having, having a robust manganese moments, just as you would explain Hans rules, and at the uh, smaller manganese manganese spacing, there's an abrupt transition uh, to having a weak or weak uh, manganese moments, uh, as you would expect in a nitinite system. And so the, set, the second variant is we were looking for uh, manganese meeting variants that were chain like with the manganese meeting spacing of oh, 2.5 or 2.6 angstroms. And so that's how we came up with this uh, pretty system. Uh, and uh, as I see from the tenor, uh, the purple atoms, which are the manganese um, atoms, uh, lie along chains that go along the t-axis, and those chains are relatively far apart. Uh, but if you look, uh, if you look at the left-hand figure, and you're now we're looking down the c-axis, uh, the purple atoms are still the manganese moments. They are basically encapsulated in constrict tubes initially of, of titanium and bismuth. So really a really uh, 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 crystal structure. Uh, and importantly, the manganese spacing along the c-axis uh, is, is uh, in fact, um, uh, as you can see, it is uh, 2.49 angstroms, 2.5 angstroms, uh, which is right, right zone uh, where we would expect uh, the magnetic moment actually first to appear and possibly accompanied by antiferromagnetic order. So that's uh, sort of the universe of where this system is. Uh, so I wanted to uh, begin by talking a little bit about the manganese moment itself. Uh, and uh, to do that, uh, I'm going to um, just think of this like an, uh, uh, just from the perspective of the atomic physics. Uh, and so uh, the, the structure is shown uh, at the left. And so say you're in the purple, you're the purple manganese moment uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the middle there. And what you're going to see is if you, look, if you look up, you're going to see a titanium square. If you look down, you're going to see a titanium square. Those titanium squares are rotated with respect to each other, each other 45 degrees, almost 45 degrees. And so in this whole crystal field, 
Um, the electrons go into the levels, as I've indicated there, there in the middle. Uh, the dz squared orbitals are lowest and they're filled. Uh, then you have the xy and the, D, the sorry, dxy and the dx squared minus y squared orbitals that are, are degenerate, generally partially filled, and then unoccupied are the xz and the yz orbitals. Uh, and so uh, a question that you could have uh, would be, um, that's great, uh, but uh, this is apparently a system where you have relatively strong hydronization. To what extent is the sequence of states preserved for the electronic structure? And so uh, the five panels that you see at the bottom of the screen uh, essentially answer that question. These are projections of the different magnitude of orbitals onto the total density of states. Uh, so you can see that on the left is the z squared uh, orbital orbital, uh, and in the middle are the uh, magnitude of sorry, they're all magnitude of the x squared minus y and z, uh, where uh, you can see that the density of states is sharply peaked. Uh, at uh, the Fermi energy, and then you have the uh, yeah. XZ and the YZ orbitals uh, that are unoccupied and at high at higher energies. And so the thing that you really to focus on with Tom is that the order of the states is eight times the same. Uh, that is, the states that are most important near the Fermi level are exactly the X squared minus Y squared uh, and the XY, uh, which appeals to your sort of sort lighter sense uh, with, uh, with you, that they are related to each other to this 45 degree rotation. So that's all good. Uh, but the really important point I want to leave you with here is that these states are very broad. Uh, they, they, the actual density of states is is uh, only partially uh, uh, dominated, but uh, not partially dominated. Sorry for that. Uh, is, uh, uh, their strong presence of the magnetic orbitals at the at the particular in particular, uh, but the states are very broad, uh, and, and the, these orbitals are strongly hybridized with each other and with the titanium. Uh, so please bear that in mind. This is not an atomic uh, sort of sort of Sophia situation. Oops. Right. Uh, so. Uh, here's sort of the next level of, 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 uh, of the electronic structure. Uh, the density of states are shown, shown at the left. Uh, these are the manganese states. And you can see for yourself exactly how broad they are through that hybridization. They're electron volts wide. Uh, and the electronic structure is shown, shown uh, at the right. It's very complex. Uh, and so uh, sort of the kindest thing you can say, and say it is that there's substantial manganese, manganese character at that. Uh, at the Fermi level, uh, but there are multiple bands that uh, are, are crossing the Fermi level. So this is not, it's not a simple one band state or something somehow. So given that that's the case, uh, let's, let's roll into talking about uh, what kind of a metal this is. And that'll come out looking at the resistivity, uh, which uh, temperature has a T, T square uh, behavior, and also an all specific heat, which has a robust uh, summit off term. Uh, and if we put those together uh, in the catalog, the Woods plot, which is on the right, right, you can see that the titanium for magnets bismuth too, too is perhaps uh, similar uh, to something like strontium strontium uh, uh something along those lines. So, so respectively uh, correlated, uh, I would say its correlations are probably typical of manganese bearing metals, metals being, uh, you know, uh, whether or not those uh, metals are three dimensional or not. So the next uh, step is to look at the magnetic moment. Uh, so on the right um, is a plot of the uh, susceptibility, uh, the Curie-Weiss plot. And you can see uh, that, that after temperatures of something like three degrees or so, uh, that you get uh, a, a, a Curie-Weiss of 1.7 bore, uh, bore magnetons per manganese, uh, which is uh, consistent with uh, spin half. Uh, the body temperature is very low. It's about six and a half degrees. It's negative, so we have an anti ferromagnetic field um, interaction, and uh, uh, that field is, let's say, 1.5 millivolts. All right. Um, uh, if you measure the magnetization uh, with the field, the field directions on the left, the left, put the field along the c-axis. You see the magnetization is isotropic in the plane, whereas on the right, uh, we're now rotating the field around uh, the 110 direction. Uh, which is a vector uh, in the basal plane. And you can see uh, that the magnetization is the smaller, smaller when the field is along the chain axis. So together, this would this suggest that you have some kind of uh, easy plane uh, magnetization in this system. All right, next question. Is this material material? And the answer is kind of. 
Uh, and so uh, you can see in the susceptibility and in the anisotropic heat uh, that you have a broad peak, uh, which is around two to three degrees. And because peak is so broad, uh, ordinarily you would say uh, that the correlations uh, are uh, limited uh, uh, by size from uh, spanning the sample, sample in infinitely long lived. Uh, and so uh, as a consequence, you would say the order is uh, short range. Uh, if, in addition, you look at the associated entropy, uh, what you'll find is that 10% of R log 2 uh, is removed by the by, by magnetic ordering. So that tells you, tells you that the majority of the uh, manganese uh, moment is still fluctuating even at the lowest temperature. We've uh, uh, used uh, neutron diffraction experiments to look for, for an um, antiferromagnetic um, peak uh, to avail. Uh, it allows us to place an upper bound, upper bound magnitude of the moment of about, about four magnetons per magnet. Uh, and so it seems uh, that uh, this is a good quantum system uh, in that it's um, not, not a order robustly, but uh, retains strong uh, situation for us, us uh, that, uh, using inelastic neutron scattering uh, measurements. And uh, Siang would absolutely uh, to point out to you uh, that this is the sample sample used. It's a coaline 400 crystals, more than 400 crystals, uh, and, uh, and uh, these aluminum panels. Uh, so that represented a substantial amount of F to, uh, uh, for, uh, for the experiment. Uh, and we've now done uh, the inelastic you know, uh, three uh, uh, instruments. So I want to just show you what our what our very, uh, what our, our primary result is, is and uh, that's uh, plotted here. Uh, so these are the exit. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is um, related to the scattering that you have at different energies and at different wave vectors. On the left are wave vectors that are along the c-axis, along OOL, OOL, and on the right uh, along a wave vector that is perpendicular to OOL, OOL, and you see very different things. Uh, if, if you look along OOL, you see that there is sort of a uh, there is a, a, a there's a gap uh, which changes the expansion of the, uh, that wave. Uh, so there's a dispersion. Uh, however, along HHO, uh, there's no wave vector dependence uh, to the energy of the actions uh, themselves. And so this is instead that you have a one a one, uh, one dimensional uh, magnetic uh, system. Uh, you can see that uh, the scattering is peaked up, peaked up at Q equals zero. This is a combination of both the magnetization density for the manganese, uh, as well as uh, the difference in the angle uh, between uh, the momentum of the neutrons themselves and the scattering uh, wave vector. Uh, and uh, uh, both of those things are represented there. So uh, uh, the, the premise is uh, that the excitations that we would see uh, would be spin-ons. And so uh, we turn then uh, to the parent Hamiltonian, which is the XXX Hamiltonian shown there at the upper right. Uh, and uh, we're going to uh, see if uh, using an expression for the uh, uh, spin-on uh, whether, whether or not uh, we, uh, we can uh, fit to this model and the of forces we can. Uh, and uh, showing you know, at the left, the left uh, those white dots are values for the parameters that are picked up uh, from this uh, from this model model. And essentially, what we learn is that the exchange uh, energy is about half a millivolt. Uh, uh, that the model, that the parameter um, epsilon in the Hamiltonian, which speaks to the anisotropy of the magnetic moment, will put them on magnetic moment uh, in the class of uh, being ising like. Uh, so uh, it's a consistent um, uh, kind of uh, description. However, it's interesting to compare it uh, to uh, you know what we what was seen in uh, what was uh, seen in um, uh, one-dimensional uh, uh, magnetic um, insulators, uh, which are uh, for your convenience on the right. Right, uh, and you can see that there is a significant difference. Not so much uh, that the excitations are gap yeah, in the case of titanium for manganese is understandable, but you see as well that the minimum of the dispersion is at uh, at Q equals uh, zero for titanium for magnetism two. Uh, however, divided by two. Uh, in uh, the potassium copper chloride, uh, where you have a well-defined antiferromagnetic uh, background. So um, that may or may not be an issue ultimately you know, when you come to understand the physics. Uh, but my uh, feeling is, is at this point, we really haven't tracked down all the physics that is potentially important in the system. In particular, 
What is the role of, of the orbital angular momentum? How strong is this good orbit, by the way? Uh, are we potentially looking at states uh, which would work out by neutron scattering? They, they would be excellent. The accidents caused by the neutrons with delta L equals one, uh, but are they necessarily, necessarily exactly the spin ons that I would have seen, would have seen yeah. systems? Uh, of course, a great question is uh, what evidence would there be that the metallic states are all one dimensional? Don't need to all be one dimensional, uh, but there, ne there needs to be a band that couples uh, or is identical, identical to uh, the d orbital uh, driven states uh, that would have one dimensional vector if we want to say that they're spin ons. Uh, and of course, we'd also likely to, uh, like to say uh, that the manganese moments themselves are not necessarily well defined. The same. And this really speaks to a problem that we have where we can explain in a clear, clear straightforward way how to think about spin-ons in a localized molecular moments. We are less uh, uh, capable of that comparison, I would say, uh, in the case of a system uh, where the magnet can only be thought of as the situations and, uh, and uh, uh, diffuse fluctuations. Uh, uh, so, uh, in uh, the waning moments of uh, my talk, I see that Zilka is becoming restless. Uh, I would just like to show you the temperature dependence uh, of the scattering. Uh, uh, that's shown in the, on the panel. Uh, so the temperatures go from going three degrees at the left uh, up to 100 degrees at the right. And I think uh, this is the scattering. And I think that you can see uh, the excitation at one millivolt is there uh, essentially at all altars and maybe drops a lot uh, to lower energies once you get to uh, very, very temperatures. Uh, but that, uh, uh, what is the quasi elastic elastic gap? If we correct uh, the scattered data laid out on the top detailed ballot, we get the plots of the susceptibility uh, in the second row. And it's a bit different, uh, uh, different story in that it tells you that the exit, the exit is essentially unchanged uh, by temperature. Uh, it's the same thing more or less at 0.3 degree, degree at 25 uh, Kelvin. And the primary difference is that if we looked at the integrated rate uh, of the susceptibility, uh, it's much less at temperatures than it is at low temperatures, but the energy and wave vector dependency are essentially the same. Uh, so uh, we averaged over wave vector and integrated over energy. energy. Uh, and the plot at uh, the bottom right uh, shows you uh, those quantities as the stars are compared uh, to the static susceptibility that you would measure in your magnetometer. And uh, what you can see is, is certainly that the temperature dependence uh, uh, match, the temperature dependencies match well. Uh, although I have to say, we don't have, uh, but we will soon have the. Uh, uh, the uh, integrated uh, susceptibility uh, in um, in um, uh, uh, absolute unit. unit. Uh, but what this tells us, I think, is another important thing, uh, which is if we can reproduce uh, the static static ability, it it all it gives a level of comfort that there, there are um, other parts of, of uh, typical space and at different energies where there will be substantial numbers of numbers uh, 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 that would remain, uh, and and, um, and so. Whatever the scattering is, this is all the manganese done. done. That's uh, more or less. Uh, there's one tiny exception to that, and I at this point don't know, don't know how significant it is. Uh, but if you look at very low energy, in this case using the spectrometer at J Park, uh, what you see on the left uh, that is that the scattering collapses to so so lower and lower energies as you lower the temperature. The different colors go from five Kelvin at purple uh, down to basically resolution limited uh, black, which is the lowest of lower trend. If, if you form uh, these data into uh, the dynamical susceptibility, uh, what you find is that uh, basically 100% of the temperature dependence is, is, is due to the balance, uh, just as we found before. And that uh, for a wide range of energies, you have a temperature independent and energy independent uh, spectrum. Uh, it's not uh, true uh, only uh, at the lowest energies, but now if we go to the highest highest sets that are accessible in our experiments, uh, what you find is shown out at night. Right? You see the same thing, uh, but over a wide wide uh, uh, energies where it, where and, uh, you have um, uh, you see the spin on peak at low at, at yeah. one millivolt. And then you see a region uh, on the right uh, where you have energy and temperature independent um, uh, susceptibility before the phonons turn on uh, at, uh, high, at higher and higher energy. And so this is perhaps a hint uh, that either there is uh, magnetic scattering at some uh, quite high energies that we're just, we're just out of the tails of, or potentially there's some sort of an anomalous 
uh, kind of background around susceptibility, uh, we haven't accounted for yet. Uh, but I, I can say, I can say uh, within the experiments, the experiments that we've done, uh, that energy, there's no sort of matching crystal kind of uh, uh, excitation, uh, uh, anything like that. Uh, that would explain um, additional uh, magnetism, which I would argue on the basis of the summer was probably not there anyway. Anyway, uh, with that, uh, I'd like to just uh, put up my conclusions. Uh, and uh, uh, these are just the, uh, the conclusions that I said, which is the neutrons are not inconsistent with the possibility uh, that this is a one dimensional system with spin on esque uh, sorts of excitations, uh, that this is a material that is. Um, metallic, although you can ask me what I mean by that word, uh, and, and with uh, possibility that we hear some kind of delocalization. Uh, and uh, that was exactly where we wanted, we wanted to in order to understand uh, what the ions would look like in that uh, regime. Uh, and this is a material that is, uh, uh, which is um, um, far from magnetic order, uh, one could say, uh, and uh, with strong, strong fluctuations uh, that are uh, of all temperatures. For all of these, uh, I might potentially put titanium for manganese business in two, uh, where I put it on the chart, um, uh, just outside of the magnetically ordered uh, regime, but close uh, to the Fermi surface um, crossover or transition uh, that you might see in the absence of magnetic order. And with that, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Uh, the resistance uh, is the magnetic resistance is very weak. Uh, uh, No, um, the uh, but I would say uh, the residual resistivity is 100, 100 microns, uh, uh, so probably that it wouldn't be, you know, that would be a little bit unlikely, let's say. Let's, um, um, uh, what, what, what to say? Uh, so the, one of the challenges that we might potentially have here is that it could turn out, uh, I have to tell you about this later when we know, uh, is that of all the bands that cross the Fermi level, uh, they don't all necessarily, you know, be, uh, they, they don't necessarily have to be robustly three dimensional. You know, it could be uh, that uh, the amount of dispersion that you have, say, along the CFC, that would be very different. And that, that could also be preferential for, for uh, the manganese content in those states. Uh, and so, you know, it could be the resistance is actually looking at sort of some average of all the states at the, at the front level and, you know, without quantum oscillation. Paul, if we don't have that information. Okay. Yes, so you said the curve of the How come majority of the is Yeah, so it's yeah. zero. It doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that we're uh, close to a fair position. We see really no evidence for that, uh, for, say, the magnetization or anything like that. Uh, and, I, uh, and I think. Right? Yeah, that uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, the magnetic magnetations appear to be gap, correct. I'm curious whether you know any sign of any sort of the situation No, um, uh, what we have is what you saw, uh, which is which is uh, that you know you you the dispersion is centered around uh, around Q equals zero, uh, and there's no special way that you know we've looked out all the way to the zone zone uh, boundary, and there's no additional uh, spectral light. So, so early on, it was five eyes of Einstein plus. Uh, what's the Einstein? Uh, uh, yeah. Like, so like, I, I, just, I, I, yeah. So it's kind of that way. Uh, so I think that uh, the the person who did that felt strongly, strongly that he wanted to get the data as best as possible. 
uh, and, and how that happened. Uh, I think that the Dubai mode would, uh, Dubai model would be sufficient to me. Uh, and mostly from that, um, we're looking at the very lowest temperatures. And so, and so back at the Einstein sun was at 50 Kelvin or something. Uh, so, you know, from, you know, from that question of, you know, uh, assessing how much entropy is associated with the magnetic order, I think it doesn't matter. Okay. I thought that something, uh, sorry, uh, I don't think you can think about the placement of your cloud there because you are still arguing in terms of localized climate, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> It put part in this in liquid factor or somewhere where the moment is actually not part of the Fermi surface. I'm um, putting it as if the moment were part of the Fermi surface. That's I would see it that way. That I well, well, um. Yeah, so I think I have sort of a bias uh, that uh, uh, I haven't really represented, represented to you, which is that the orbital physics is very uh, important here, uh, and so the fact that we get those. Spin a half. Spin a half. Uh, I would only say we don't know what the key factor is, and so you know the, we're not at the end at the end of that of that story just yet. Uh, and so if you say you don't actually know how big uh, the, uh, the mass uh, you know moment is, then then uh, I don't know which side of it, but I do feel like uh, it's in the right uh, neighborhood. Okay. Last question. Yes. So more than more than are you are you little physics and um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I hear you with the mask. Yeah, yeah. I guess, how do you know the orbital physics is important? The Curry Dice law just suggests that how people do it. Um, yeah, so, so why do I think the orbital physics is, uh, is potentially important? Um, so, it speaks, uh, well, anyway, anyway. So, so what we what we, what we observe is that the manganese titanium hybridization is very strong, uh, and in fact, uh, to the point where there is a moment that's induced on the titanium, and part of the moment is on the manganese, and and the state that you can build uh, from those uh, moments uh, is, is is not a spin a half state. It is one that has definite orbital uh, character, and so uh, uh, what we're what we're trying to understand why we have such a relatively localized state, such a low energy scale, you know, when the hybridization is so massive in this uh, system. And uh, the, the idea is that we're actually localizing the electrons on the magnesite sites, uh, essentially by having uh, two um, uh, two states that are built of manganese, manganese titanium in say odd and even um, kinds of mixtures, uh, which would localize uh, the the advanced manganese sites. Uh, so, quick question: What is the potential for improving this ratio? Is it like the Yeah. If you think it's possible, I mean, I mean, you know, we look at the turbine to 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 lead, which had yeah, spin-ons, uh, and it had uh, up to half a microohm centimeter of uh, resistivity. Uh, but I think that when you have systems which have more uh, mixed character, some local character and some um, uh, extended uh, itinerant character as well. Uh, that typically you're going to have a larger residual resistivity intrinsic to the material. We have seen no, seen no tendency uh, in that uh, in that value. Uh, okay, thank you so much, Megan, once again.